Well, I will warn you now that what I'm about to describe, some of it will be hard to hear. I will also warn you that I'm going to play some tape in a couple of minutes that many people will find hard to watch. I certainly did. But when this story broke today, even though there are stories of this type that seem like they break all the time, this one in particular just seemed to stop the news in its tracks. Certainly for everybody who come, works on this show, it stopped us all in our tracks. Just kind of, you can't really move on once you've seen something like this. What this is about um, is something that happened in Louisiana just over two years ago. And in West Monroe, Louisiana, there's a hospital there called Glenwood Regional Medical Center. And that night, May 10th in 2019, the emergency room at that hospital received an ambulance. And the ambulance held a 49-year-old man uh, who was handcuffed to a gurney. He was already deceased when the ambulance pulled into Glenwood Regional Medical Center and they wheeled him into the ER. The ambulance was accompanied by Louisiana State Police. And the police that night told the emergency room doctor who was attending this ambulance that the man who was dead in the ambulance had um, died on impact when he crashed his car into a tree. That was the explanation for why this man was dead when he arrived at the ER. And the doctor examined the body, examined the man who'd been brought in in the ambulance, noted in his doctor's notes that the man was covered in blood and covered in bruises. But he also noted that the man had two taser prongs hanging out of his back. Wait a minute. This is supposedly a car crash casualty. What? They're saying he crashed into a tree, died on impact. What, did the tree tase him after he hit it? The ER doctor noted all this in his notes and actually wrote in his notes that night. He wrote, quote, does not add up. Because, right, it did not add up. And yet that really was the official explanation that Louisiana State Police tried to go with for how a 49-year-old barber from West, in West Monroe, Louisiana, a man named Ronald Green, that's the story they tried to tell about how he died that night. Louisiana State Police told Mr. Green's family that he died when he crashed his car during a chase. They said, troopers said they tried to pull him over for some sort of unspecified traffic violation shortly after midnight, about 30 miles south of the Arkansas state line outside Monroe. They said he died on impact when he crashed into a tree. It took the ER doctor pointing out the freaking taser prongs still hanging out of his back. It took Mr. Green's family filing a wrongful death, death suit for police to admit that, yes, okay, something else might have happened. No, they can't come up with an explanation for how the tree fired those taser prongs into him. Police released a one-page new report with a new ex explanation that said, quote, Green was taken into custody after resisting arrest and a struggle with troopers. And then inexplicably, he became, quote, unresponsive. He became unresponsive and died on his way to the hospital. The report did not describe any use of force by the troopers in this instance. And that was literally all the Louisiana State Police said about the death of Ronald Green. That's all they have ever said. To this day, more than two years later, the Louisiana State Police have still given no further explanation of Ronald Green's death in their custody. And crucially, for all of this time, they have refused to release the troopers' body camera footage from that night. It took 474 days after Mr. Green died for the state police to even open an internal investigation into what happened. And that was only when their hand was forced. Summer of protests over the police murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis had put the spotlight back on cases like Mr. Green's. Perhaps more presciently, um, in terms of seeing what impact it might have, Mr. Green's family also took the radical step of releasing graphic photos to the public in an effort to demonstrate to the public that the police explanation of what killed Ronald Green was a ridiculous explanation. They released photos of the condition of the body when they received it. They showed deep bruises, deep cuts to Ronald Green's face and scalp. They also showed his vehicle. They released a photo of his vehicle. It's the car he'd been driving the night that he died, showed that the car was only Mildly damaged, the airbags hadn't deployed. This was not a car that had been involved in a major crash that had mortally wounded its driver. In the midst of all of this, the Justice Department announced that it had opened a civil rights investigation into Ronald Green's death. Can you imagine how bad a case has to look for the Trump Justice Department to open a civil rights investigation? Really? Did they even do that? And still, the Louisiana State Police would not say anything else about Ronald Green's death. 
wouldn't release the body cam footage, wouldn't afford any further explanation of what happened. Last September, they finally decided to fire one of the officers that was involved in Mr. Green's death, although they would not say why they were firing him. Tragically, that officer died in a single vehicle car crash just hours after he was told that he was fired. Days later, the Associated Press obtained audio of that same officer describing how he beat and choked Ronald Green the night of his death. On a recording from his body cam microphone, the officer, that officer who was in the one car, car crash, um, was heard telling somebody very matter-of-factly that he, quote, beat the ever-living F out of Ronald Green. He said, quote, choked him and everything else. He was spitting blood everywhere, and all of a sudden, he just went limp. After that horrifying reporting, Ronald Green's family was finally, after a year and a half, allowed to see the body cam footage from the night that he died. The family's attorney said that Mr. Green's mother and sister wailed like they were at a funeral when they finally saw the footage. He said it was damning footage that showed the troopers choking and beating Ronald Green, repeatedly jolting him with tasers, dragging him face down across the pavement. That attorney, Lee Merritt, who also watched the footage, told the Associated Press, quote, this family has been lied to the entire time about what happened. The video was very difficult to watch. It's one of those videos like George Floyd and even Ahmed Aubrey, where it is just so graphic. Well, today what happened is that today we learned to our collective horror that the attorney for the Green family was right when he described it that way. Because today the Associated Press obtained and published edited excerpts from the Louisiana State Trooper's body cam footage from the night that Ronald Green died. And I will tell you that this stopped the news today for a reason. I'm going to show you some of what the AP published today. As I said, it is not a pleasure to watch. Uh, that is a grave understatement. It is disturbing to watch. And the nightmarish nature of the video of this incident is compounded by how long all of this was kept secret, how blatantly state troopers lied about what really happened. There is something even worse about the fact that we are only seeing this footage now more than two years after the fact, and not because the police finally decided to release it, but because a dogged reporter from the Associated Press was finally able to get it, and that's the only reason it has come out. Again, it is more than two years after this happened, and they have had this all the time. So here's the first bit of video we're going to play tonight. This is when police approach Ronald Green's car. They have been chasing him. This is the, the chase has come to an end. I should, I'll tell you again, this footage is excerpted and edited by the Associated Press. We don't have the raw tape. The full footage they obtained is 46 minutes long. They say there's long stretches where Mr. Green is not on camera. The trooper whose body camera footage it is appears to cut the microphone off about halfway through. That makes it hard to discern what's going on in some moments. We don't have footage from other troopers at the scene. The AP itself is cautioning that can, it can be difficult to piece together what's happening at all times. But in some of it, it's clear. Like in this clip, where police first approach Ronald Green's car, it certainly appears that he is not resisting and, in fact, is pleading with the troopers. Let me see your hands. Let me, let me see your hands, mother. Come here, mother. Okay, okay, okay. says at the end there, officer, I'm scared. I'm your brother. I'm scared. We also have another portion of the body cam video after the troopers get Mr. Green out of the car. And you'll see Mr. Green on the ground here, pretty, appearing pretty motionless. While an officer tases him again, the officer then handcuffs him. Mr. Green is clearly bloodied at this point. The officer's Part of the reason we can confirm that is that the officers are commenting about the amount of his blood that they've got on them and the fact that they are wiping it off themselves. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Taser, taser, taser! taser. Oh, get up here! Get your 
The AP tonight has posted one other portion of the video. This portion doesn't have sound. We believe what happened here is the trooper turned off the microphone on his body cam. But you can see here Ronald Green handcuffed on the ground. Uh, the AP reports that later, after a several minute stretch in which Ronald Green is not seen on camera, he appears again limp, unresponsive, bleeding from his head, bleeding from his face. He's then loaded onto an ambulance gurney. His hand, is, his arm is, is cuffed to the bed rail. Um, but here what you will see is an officer putting leg shackles on him. And then I'm not going to show you this part, but what you can see in part of this video is the officer dragging Mr. Green by those leg shackles across the ground face down. Again, his handcuffs are on him behind his back. His legs are shackled. He is face down and limp, and they are dragging him by the leg shackles face down across the ground. Now, the Louisiana State Police tonight would not comment on the content of these videos, except to say that the release of the video was not authorized. Yeah, tell us about it. They said the release of these videos, quote, undermines the investigative process. Yes, how is that investigative process going? Well, the officer who dragged Ronald Green on his face by his leg shackles, he was suspended from duty for um, 50 hours for that offense. 50 hours. Another of the troopers is now on unpaid leave, but not for Ronald Green's death. He and several other troopers from the same unit were arrested um, a few months ago for beating up other black men in their custody. They were also discovered to be bragging to each other over text messages about the violence they have inflicted on black men they have arrested. But there's also the federal investigation into Ronald Green's death. There's also his family's lawsuit against the state police.